Hi again, this is Ram with Better Tattooing. Today we're going to be discussing some of the science behind doing a white ink tattoo over a blackout. All right. Okay, now that that's over with, I have seen a lot of this stuff popping up recently, and there hasn't really been too much of an explanation as to why this stuff happens. So, I mean, to start with, one, this is all going to be hypothetical based on previous research where I'm kind of tying some stuff together. Um, so I'm hoping that it is absolutely correct. It sounds kind of right in my head, but this is what my assumptions are, uh, what is occurring when we're actually doing these things, right? So let's, let's talk about this. Um, usually what's going to happen when we do a blackout tattoo is you have something that's there that you don't like, right? So what we're doing is we're just technically taking that tattoo that we don't like and we are covering it with black. I mean, you see our other videos about light interactions with pigments. I think we just did one a couple weeks ago anyways. And uh, you can see how this stuff works. So what we're doing is we're putting something on that is absorbing light energy and making it so that nothing is passing through. Now, the first assumption that we see people make is that when we put black over something that's there, that the existing tattoo is gone. And that is not correct. What's happening is, is that we've dumped enough of an absorbent material, that's absorbing light energy, on top of an existing tattoo that there isn't enough available light to actually light up the tattoo that's there. What's interesting to see is there is recently a report, which you can see on our Facebook if you want to. I think it's on the podcast Facebook, uh, a tattoo podcast, um, that when they use extremely focused and extremely dialed in light, where they're using just a, an, only a very limited wavelength uh, of light to show a specific color over top of some of these cover-ups, is that the existing tattoo will show through. So even if black is there, they use high intensity red light or blue light or green light or something else, especially if there's already a color tattoo there, you can see it through this, which is really amazing, right? So when we do a blackout, a blackout over a black tattoo will result in a blackout, true. But if you're going over color tattoos, just know that what's there is a very dark version of the colors that are already there. So. Blackouts defined. What happens when we start tattooing white pigment over top of this? Now, the first thing that we need to know is that we're inducing trauma, right? We're creating a wound with a needle that's going in and it's gonna be depositing another pigment on top of this. Now with modern pigments, when they go in, regardless of the pigment size, the particle size, which we'll get into in a second, um, they don't just kind of like stack on top of each other like building blocks, right? Because the needle is never at a consistent depth. Even if you see somebody who floats it majestically, the skin is of different thicknesses throughout, right? So we're gonna see that trauma be imparted in different areas. Now what happens when we impart trauma? We've cut a line through this. The body is gonna be forced to heal. Now in the healing of a tattoo, we've deposited a whole bunch of pigment all throughout even the epidermis when we're causing this break and tear with the needles, some of that pigment when we're healing is ejected, which you know when you get the scabby bits on the top and there's, it's full of color, that's because some color has been ejected, ejected, as well as some is absorbed into the body, it just falls in. The trauma that we create, if it's not consistent, you're gonna have breaks all throughout of different depths where the pigment is actually deposited. And the stuff that gets really deep, especially if there's a mass amount of swelling or various other variables that are gonna be put into it, some of that pigment just falls in the body. It's collected, pulled in through the lymphatic system, gets trapped in lymph nodes, right? So every time that we go over a tattoo, regardless if there's pigment in it or not, and we're doing something with it, we will be opening up that wound and there will be a loss of pigment one way or the other. Now, when we take white pigment specifically, and we start getting apart from the trauma here, the particle size is really important, right? Because white, especially, when we start getting into like titanium dioxide in the pigments, the dispersions of the particles are really, really, really small. So when we initially start to aggregate it into the wound that we're creating when we're doing a tattoo, it is going to get more pieces of that pigment 
in a smaller space together than something that's much larger, right? You can think about pouring sand into a jar versus marbles. There's gonna be less air space or like tissue space that's gonna be surrounding it, right? So when we start aggregating on top of this, we can create a weight that technically will start pushing these pigments even lower into the skin. But given that this is always inconsistent, we're gonna have variables, or sorry, not variables, variances inside the actual like vividness of that when it comes through. You're gonna have some spots that are gonna be really easy to see, others that aren't, and it's gonna look kind of blotchy. The last thing that's gonna happen when you're putting this white pigment in is that white pigment, because it's it likes to clump together. It's like magnetic. It pulls and attaches to itself. It ends up encapsulating and wrapping around the actual pigment that's already in there. So it can even make some spots inside of that darker, which is really cool, right? When you start getting an aggregation of black pigment that's been pulled around and is surrounded by white, it's easier to knock it out the next time because all you do is just go in and put some white on top of it and shove it into the body. And that's usually what is gonna happen when you go into the third, fourth, fifth sitting. You're gonna be pushing more and more and more of that pigment into the body. On top of that, because these particle sizes are so small, they tend to drift and fall into the skin as it ages, right? While some of the white pigment, when we initially place it into the body, is easily suspended as the body ages and the skin thins, the smaller particles, which some of these particles are so small, they can even pass into the nucleus of a cell. Let me grab my other markers here, which is insane. Right? You gotta think about how small that is. As they're, if they're able to pass into the nucleus of a cell, that means that they can pass back out. They tend to, as we age, drift further into the bottom layers of the dermis and eventually being pulled into the lymphatic tissues and away from where the tattoo is. This is why some of the tattoo pigments that we see that have a lot of white mixed in with them tend to fade quicker. Not only are they more exposed to the elements, right, because white light is going to be much brighter than things that have been filtered, refracted, or reflected in another way, and it'll cause a degradation of the pigments that they're mixed with, but also there's so much white pigment in some of these things, that there's not enough of the other raw pigment left. If we have blue, 6%, and 94% white to make a very ultra light blue, as that white pigment starts to move out and into the body, you're not gonna be left with enough pigment that's actually in the skin for it to show well, right? So. This is what's gonna happen when we do this with the tattoo as well. We're gonna start seeing a lightning effect occur with the white as it settles and moves further into the body. And as it squishes up, those lines where the white tattoo are, are going to end up coming back. But not if you increase the trauma. Oh, I hate this red. <laughs> I know, Ryan, why don't you just go buy new markers? It came as a set. So last bit we wanna do is we wanna go back to trauma number, whatever. Um, <coughs> every time that we tattoo the skin, we're going to be creating wound, right? So we have needles coming in and then the body is forced to heal that area. Now the- My battery died. <laughs> so the more times that we hit it, <laughs> over and over and over, the greater chance that there is for the skin to be damaged to a point that it's just not going to be the same. There's gonna be increased scarring. And I mean, we could even say this just, just as a blanket, I am 99% positive that the more times that you're gonna go over the skin over and over and over, you're just going to be building scarring up. Now, this can be a negative when we're wanting to keep something clear. But if done correctly and in a very gentle built up way, we can actually start to toughen up the skin around the wound area by increasing margins of scar tissue slowly, which may, like I guess so this is a lot of this is hypothetical, may actually create a barrier space where that pigment is gonna be less likely to enter into as it thins and ages. That is so super technical. I don't know if there's an ethical way to test it, <laughs> but, my assumption would be that, and that we can see this sometimes with older tattoos where there may be a lot of detail, right? But we also do see some scarring alongside where this detail is. Which way that the pigment ends up flowing away, usually when it hits that heavy scarred area, if there's no pigment in it, it kind of acts like a blocker. 
or you may see these little finger lines of pigment falling through it, right? Um, but, like I said, this is so technical, I don't think that we should test it. <laughs> and it's also hypothetical. So, what actually happens when we do this white over a blackout? One, if it's only a black tattoo, we're slowly removing the amount of pigment that's in there by pushing it into the body and replacing it with another pigment that is eventually just going to fall into the body. We're also increasing the chances of scarring occurring, which over time may make the tattoo look really, really muddy. Or if it's done in a specific way that is completely hypothetical and you should never try, it may make it look clearer and cleaner. But there's always going to be a timeline on that, right? Eventually, we're all going to get really old and our tattoos are going to look like mud. So, might as well just try to do it the right way the first time and not even end up with one of these. Think before you ink, people. But anyways, hopefully you like it. Uh, we'll try to cover some more science stuff in the future. It's been a little bit busy lately, so I haven't done too many videos. But if you did like this, like, subscribe, comment in the bottom. Let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, that'll be it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.